Hi, Pep. Hope you're well. Okay. Good. Um, and first things first, we should really, again, check on the COVID situation at the club. I take it no further cases. Um, so when are we likely to see Virgil, Fabinho and Curtis Jones back? How's Thiago? And separate to that, how's Jordan Henderson and has he recovered from his cold? Yeah, I want to use this opportunity first to make a compliment to the team because it was not easy the game to go to Spurs away and lose your spine in the days coming up with uh, Virgil, um, Fabinho and Thiago. But losing your captain on match day, it's, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, we all know that Jordan uh, reflects our willpower, our de determination, and losing him for the team was massive. So that's why I want to make the compliment because this COVID, the COVID cases really influence our preparation. And what I like about football and I like about our team is that the moment Jurgen does his meeting, the last meeting, we leave everything behind us and we only look towards the game to attack the match day. And uh, this is what the team did. If you saw the first half against Tottenham, that we had 70% possession away from home against a fresh Tottenham with the changes we had to make last minute. Uh, it's just a big compliment for the whole team and their mindset. They created a mindset to attack the game and I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, um, it's still the same. Virgil, Fabinho, Thiago and Curtis Jones, of course, uh, are not in the building, are at home. Um, I have to say that um, I just pray for all the ones uh, who are, have to go to hospital. Look, we are young and healthy and we hope that we don't have to make this drive. Um, but these are the times that we have to think about these people as well. Uh, health always comes first. So, um, and that's what we're going to do with them as well. We do, will not rush them back. Uh, we will take our time. This mm -hmm. virus is really unpredictable. We have to see how each one, um, if they get sick, um, if they have real symptoms, how to, uh, we will not rush them back. We will take our time and um, that's the most important. Pep, we understand the club was in favour of a break in the schedule to combat the rising COVID cases across the Premier League. So what is the feeling now that after yesterday's meeting, as it stands, that break isn't going to happen? No, we always make our recommendations. Uh, each year we speak with the Premier League, we speak with the FA, we speak with the refs and uh, we give our honest opinion to improve the quality of the game. And that's what we did again in this meeting. And we really believe that if you want to improve the quality of the game, first of all, we love to work in England and we love the Premier League, the intensity, the quality of our position, the playing every three days. We love it. So don't get me wrong if I, but we all have to respect recovery. If you want a quality game, it's important that the players don't accumulate fatigue because that, Creates, so example, if our players are more fatigued, they make not as quick the decisions. They are not as brave. They are not as creative. Not a lot of spontaneous actions. We will play the ball to the side and play instead of forward. So the quality of the game goes down, the more fatigued is, and we have to respect the fact that a, 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 a Premier League player needs 72 hours to recover. So if we... Um, if we if we want more quality, the second thing is, um, in all our recommendation, all uh, we have to respect as well the recovery process because it will re reduce the risk of injury. Yeah. And finally, for me, Pep, and it's going back to the weekend, and obviously the controversies that we saw with with VAR. Have there been any conversations with Mike Riley or anyone else from PGML? what went on as regards the penalty shout on Diogo and the Harry Kane challenge on Andy Robertson? And if not, will you be seeking any conversations with the PGMOL? And what do you want to say to them? No, no, because everybody saw what happened. And uh, I think the VAR is a good thing that it's in football because it can help to make the big decisions right. At least everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. Uh, if we make big mistakes, Jürgen and myself, uh, we get punished. If players make big mistakes, they get punished. But if referees make big mistakes, probably or usually the teams get punished or the players get punished as well. And that's not correct. And I'm not talking about the small mistakes in the game because that's football. It goes so quick. But the VAR is there to help the referee. And what I still don't understand is that why the VAR is always a separate person. Why the VAR is not part of a team. So you have a referee team and because... There are split seconds. The, the guy 
who helps the referee on the pitch needs to know the referee with everything he has. They need to be a team because together they are responsible. If there's always changes, that will not work. And that's the same that would be if Jürgen every week has a different assistant manager. <laughs> that's exactly the same. You need, and I wish, I wish we had VAR to make better decisions as coaches because then I will not make mistakes. Thank you very much, Vinny. Much appreciated. Juliet for a couple, then Ian uh, Abrams from Talksport for a couple, Carl Markham from Press Association, and Chris Coughlin from Airport. Hey, Pat. Um, just one of the players that um, Vinny just asked you about, Jordan Henderson. How How is he? Because I know he had a little bit of a, a bug, didn't he? A bit of a cold. Is he Is he okay? Jordan is Jordan. He called <laughs> yesterday already to train again. <laughs> <laughs> He had a heavy call and we know how quick that can come and go, but he pushes himself immediately and uh, he needs, he's, he's the, this, this the kind of play you have to slow down. And luckily we have 24 of these players. What, what's the, um, I mean, if we can talk about the, the, this cup tie, hopefully it will go ahead. But what, but what is the, what is the situation in terms of the team going into this one? And I imagine there's, there's going to be changes, isn't there, from, from the game at Tottenham? Yeah. We don't look like games like this. We only look to improve our team, uh, to prepare the team. And uh, for us, it's much more important what we are going to do than who's going to play, for an example. And if you saw our lineup against AC Milan away, everybody would think or was thinking probably of you guys like, wow, that's brave. And we only thought game on. So um, um, it's... In the beginning of the season, we always make like we speak with our players to say we want to create memories together. We want to create special games together. We want to create special games with the fans together. And that's what we're going to do tomorrow. We try to make it a cup night for the fans, full of desire with all we have. And uh, for that, we need fresh legs as well. So from just finally for me, from, from, from the Liverpool side, you, you, you've, got a, you've got a team to put together out there. I'm just thinking because there's so many like games in doubt, isn't there, with, with what's going on at the moment? Yeah, but that is a fair question, of course. And uh, the, I think every club has a completely different situation. So you can only look at it as an individual. Leicester had their cases like two weeks ago. Um, so probably uh, these boys are all back from illness and hopefully they're all fine. Uh, you saw that Tottenham, even after 10 or 12 days, when they come back, they can play really well, <laughs> these, bo these boys. So um, we prepare a strong Leicester team. We prepare a Leicester team, what's uh, a typical Brandon Rogers team, uh, what will open up the pitch, will want to, want to have the ball, wants to make the game, wants to, uh, wants to be in the opposition half, um, with real technicians in the center, with speed on top, with Barnes who has a, has a brilliant season, or Daka or uh, Vardy as the striker. So we will prepare to play against a strong Leicester team. Thank you. Thank you, Juliet. Um, Ian, from Talksport. Hi, Pep. How are you? You well? I'm okay. Good. Just a couple from me. First of all, how important now is this tournament? We're getting we're in the quarterfinal stage. It's being rumoured there might only be a one-legged semi-final. How how important is this tournament now to Liverpool? Uh, we don't prioritise. We are not like this. The only thing we'll prioritise is the next game. Uh, make a lineup, create a plan, prepare well. And attack match day. That's what we prioritize. So that's what we're going to do. We that's one of our strengths, and that's part of our club mentality to see the next game as the final. That's what the fans expect from us. Mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we will put everything into this game. Our, our hunger, our desire. Um, the players really look forward to play football. So uh, we love this game too much. <laughs> <laughs> and my other question is is going back to COVID. Um, we've heard managers talking about taking a break, a circuit breaker, to try and get over this problem. Why do you think that the chief executives of the club yesterday, all clubs yesterday, when they had that Premier League meeting, voted against what the experts, in this case the managers, were saying beforehand, i.e. let's take a break? Ian, I'm just going to jump in there. I don't think it's correct to say there was a vote, but you'd have to check that with the Premier League. Um, and also, I think Pep, just to be clear, outlined at the beginning what our position was. I don't think you can necessarily speak for other clubs, but I just wanted to make sure there wasn't a vote. It's not no. right now, but you can check that. In the Premier League. But for me, the experts are not the managers. For me, the experts are the scientists and the doctors, mm. and we should follow their guidelines. And they should be asked, the Premier League should ask them 
not the CEOs, not the managers, they should ask them. Because health always comes on position number one, above everything. The guys who are driving now to hospital, who are sick, they only have one thing in their mind, to get better. That's what my mom always said. In life, you want a lot of things, always a lot of things. But when you're sick, you just want one thing. That's getting better. So I pray for them. And what I want to say with that is that uh, we are in this job as well to protect our players, to protect our staff, not just the players and our staff, also the family, mem family members. All. That's why we have all these good measurements in place and, and we try to cut the chain with our, our testing and with how we deal inside the AXA. And uh, we have to follow the protocols and the guidelines of the doctors and the scientists. That's, uh, if we would, if there's one common uh, behavior in this pandemic over the last years is that we always acted too late, always. And that's what we went from one health crisis into the other. Cool. Good luck anyway. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Stay safe. Uh, Carl Markham and then Chris Coppen, and then we're going to go to the embargo section, which uh, I could do with some hands up for. We've got Tom for a moment. Carl, over to you. Hi, Pat. Carl. All right. Um, with, with the Premier League saying that that you, you have to play the game if you've got 14 players available. I'm just wondering if that places extra demand on, on some of your younger players who would say would normally come in for a game like this or be around the fringes of the, of the first team. Do you have to, you know, rely on them a little bit more? Uh, yeah, but we always relied on them. One of our ideas inside this club is to have, I think the, the, the one thing for for health, if you want to have a healthy club, is to have a, a proper inside pathway that the academy is important, that the academy has a chance to improve inside our club to become first team players. That's why we um, uh, construct our squad how we construct it. That's why we give so many young players opportunities. Example, we made, I think, five Liverpool debuts was, were this year in the, in the League Cup. So uh, that's healthy. That's something we want. One, because we have the talent, so it's not that we don't have it. So, uh, But we want to give them the opportunity to grow inside our club. And um, for me, that's only a good thing. So if, if it means that players are unavailable, I see that as a challenge. That's one, of course. We see it as a challenge. But second, we see it as something what uh, it will create new players. And that's what we want as well. So it's, it's only a good thing. Okay. And uh, talking players who, who are or, or not available, is, is, is Divock recovered from his knock yet? Is he glad to be in contention with the squad? He's still not training with the team, so he will not be. He's our top scorer in this league. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, what I mean. Awesome, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Carl. Uh, and then finally, this section, Chris, and then we go to the embargoes, and we've got the uh, hands up. Chris. Hi, Pat. Hey. Uh, it's understood that Liverpool were among the group. Uh, or among a group of clubs who were pushing for the postponement of game week 20, so games between the 28th and the 30th. Just wondering if, if you were aware of the reasons behind that and would postponing those games have been something that, that you would have been in favour of? Yeah, yeah, Jürgen made this point really clear after the game. So uh, we really believe that we are in the position of to protect our players. We think it's uh, absurd that we have to play inside 48 hours for the reasons I just explained because it's a much higher risk of um, injury. And second of all, um, uh, the quality of the game will not be as good. Um, how I try to explain as well, what happens if players are more fatigued, you don't get uh, the offensive attitude we want. So, and the offensive quality we want. And second of all, football is a team sport. So the moment we lose players, and uh, we have to push players through these situations. It, uh, it becomes, uh, the risk becomes just bigger. So that's what Jürgen tried to explain. That's what I tried to explain. So I think it's absurd. The teams who, uh, you have to ask them why they want to play in these kind of uh, uh, circumstances. But I think it would be a wise decision also because of our individual situation here with the COVID cases being this fresh that uh, we had more time um, uh, before the next game. Thank you very much, Chris. Okay, we now go to the embargo section. So for those of you who are 